What is the Harley-Davidson rewire? Let's get into it. Revelator Alpha. Hello, welcome to Revelator Alpha. I hope you're enjoying the channel and the series of videos. Uh, please subscribe, hit that bell, like and share, leave those comments and check out the website revelatoralpha.com. So, Harley-Davidson Motor Company have just released their first quarter results of uh, 2020. And uh, it's not very uh, good reading uh, if you're a Harley-Davidson fan, of course, of which I am as well. Now, the poor results are actually quite understandable considering the coronavirus COVID-19 that's gone throughout the, uh, the whole globe. This has affected sales of all countries uh, and all, uh, of all companies as well. So Harley-Davidson are on no difference in that regard and also their stock price has plummeted just like uh, other companies have plummeted as well. So it's no different. Before coronavirus uh, took hold. Actually, uh, in the report, uh, they were saying they were seeing over 6% growth uh, in sales uh, globally as well. And certainly in the United States, they were seeing uh, just over 6%, I believe, as well. So uh, they were actually starting off 2020 not too bad. We know there was a CEO change uh, a couple of months ago. Matt Levitich uh, left and Joe Chen Zeitz came in and took over the helm we kind of had an inkling that at some point there were going to be a few changes made uh, in terms of strategy and in terms of direction the way the company was supposed to be going. Now, Harley-Davidson as a company is, I suppose, quite divisive, isn't it, really? Um, whether from the supporters, some people love them, some people don't. Some people love the old Harley-Davidson in terms of company structure and ethos, and others really like the new style, uh, the new direction. Others like the new motorcycles, others like the old motorcycles. So this video isn't really about that. It's more about what the company here, now under the new acting CEO, where they believe that uh, some issues are and what they have to change for the future. If you go to the Harley-Davidson website and go to the news section, right at the bottom you'll see the financial bit. Click on the financial bit and you'll find the first quarter results. In there it actually states this, the rewire. And it says the company is executing a set of actions referred to as the rewire that will be further developed over the coming months leading to a new strategic plan. I'll let you read this, but it just goes on for a little bit more defining what that is. But essentially, they haven't actually spelled anything out, really. They're going to release more information at the end of uh, the second quarter results. But what they're looking at is changing the way Harley-Davidson do business and where their focus lies, and they're going to change this into a five-year plan. Now, many people, uh, myself included, were quite enthusiastic with Harley-Davidson with the More Roads program. The More Roads program was uh, designed to attract new riders to the brand. And this is about the brand evolving and going forward, uh, what it will be like in the future with the different types of riders. But the issue was, did they have the models, did they have the vision to really attract new riders. Yes, they've gone into the electrified market with the uh, Livewire. Yes, we've had the M8 engines obviously come out and they're all on the Taurus and the Softails, of course. Yes, there has been development with the liquid-cooled engine, the Pan American, the Bronx, that is yet to be released. So there is evolution there. But actually what they're saying now is actually we want to kind of take a lot of the elements away from the more roads program and we want to focus on uh, the bikes the models that are going to be profitable the markets which are going to be profitable and uh, really get back to some kind of root structure um, what does that actually mean now some commentators have already speculated that that means the pan america and the bronx will be scrapped um, actually no it doesn't because here it clearly states uh, that that's still on the horizon what it does mean is that uh, future models in the prototype design phase right now may be scrapped as the company uh, goes in a different direction now, this does not mean that electrified motorcycles uh, of the future will be scrapped and other liquid-cooled engine motorcycles may be scrapped as well. 
but that's down the line. We're also looking at different types of engine development. Maybe that'll be changed. Maybe they'll uh, stick to more of what they know rather than uh, some other types of engines as well. So it's, it's all about the future rather than what's actually happening now and what's going to be imminently happening. But as I say, they're looking at a five-year plan let's see what happens now the big points to really pay attention to uh, if you really want to know about uh, the new direction of the company over the next five years this new strategy the rewire uh, is that it's going to enhance core strengths and better balance expansion into new spaces and basically this is all about returning the focus to the the brand and what they do best and also where they do it best as well. So that's something that they're looking at. Okay, so the next point is here, prioritize the markets that matter. Uh, so they are looking at uh, the United States market. They are looking at uh, the falling sales of the United States, but also other markets where they haven't seen a lot of growth as well. So they really want to address or readdress the balance there, which in many ways is a good thing really. They're also uh, reviewing when they're going to launch new products. Now, traditionally, this is going to be in the uh, August, uh, September time uh, around the globe. They're actually bringing that forward to March, April time, may maybe a little bit earlier, February time as well. So that captures the whole uh, will start of the riding season, certainly uh, in the Northern Hemisphere. And crucially, in their biggest market, which will be the United States. So that's something they're looking at be, becoming a lot more customer focused. They want to try and re-engage with the, uh, the customers as well and uh, really feel what the customers want, when they want that information and uh, will that translate into sales as well. So from that point of view, that's, that's actually a very good thing. It also talks here about uh, building the parts and accessories and general merchandise businesses to the full potential. Uh, you know, the, it has its critics and the, the parts and the merchandise has its critics over the years, of course. But it's actually looking at this and building up that side of the business a little bit more and also addressing a lot of the parts issues that have been uh, over the globe in, in the recent months as well. So that's another interesting point. And the final point I think here is really interesting. Uh, and, it, and it basically says this, the adjust and align the organizational structure cost structure and operating model to reduce complexity and drive efficiency to set Harley Davidson up for stability and success. Okay, this basically means that uh, in the next few months or certainly over the next few years, uh, it's going to be a cost cutting exercise. Again, there's going to be restructuring, certainly from a management, mid-level management, and also at the coal face as well. Uh, we're probably going to see uh, some reorganization in terms of the United States, but also around the globe as well. Nothing is definite, of course. Now, will this mean that there'll be a change in the quality of the product that Harley Davidson are producing? No, I would think that they're trying to be a lot more cost effective and a lot more secure in their business model. And that uh, means right across the board in terms of which models they're going to produce, which are the most profitable models. Uh, are they really going to look at R&D investment that's going to take them down a rabbit hole that they may not want to go down to? Uh, which markets are they really going to focus on? The United States, North American model and the European model you might might say as well uh, and also which specific models that they currently have will they keep and will they scrap a few of those as well it's an interesting thing here because if you look at the when they're talking about resetting the project launches uh, they're they're fully committed it says to the venture touring street fighter and advancing electric motorcycles as well so that tells me that the pan america bronx even the uh the Lowrider custom uh i think is that's called the bare knuckle is it uh, uh that is all still in the pipeline and that's still Still come through as well. The live wire, which Ocean uh, Zeitz was also a big part of as well, that still seems to be uh, full steam ahead as well. There are reports of a new uh, electric motorcycle to come in the next couple of years, I think, uh, and it's like of a mid-range uh, sort of size as well. 
that's still on track as well. Uh, there's nothing in here to say specifically which motorcycles will uh, be stopped and which will continue, but we can imagine that the ones that were on the agenda or were on the horizon, the imminent horizon, will still come through. It's everything else that's behind the scenes that is probably going to change. We as a customer base, we probably won't notice that. Now from Harley Davidson themselves, this could be a really defining moment and it also could be one of the best decisions they've ever made. In fact, many supporters of the older Harley Davidson would look at this and say, perhaps actually this is where the company should be as well get back to what it does best and you know ignore all this other stuff just do what it does best others might say well actually the company needs to evolve it needs to change this might be the worst thing for it i always thought that with the more roads program whilst it was ambitious and there was a lot of enthusiasm for it around the globe i still think that it failed to hit the mark in terms of entry level motorcycles uh, now some might argue that section that's not what harley davidson should be they should be op operating at the higher end of the market as well i tend to disagree i think they should be like they were in the AMF years, I know not to everybody's taste, of course, but in terms of entry-level motorcycles to the brand of Harley-Davidson, they had it. They had the low displacement engines, the 125s, 250s, so on and so forth, uh, and people were attracted to that uh, size engine, and then they could use that as a stepping stone for bigger and better uh, motorcycles, or Harley-Davidson's, as it were. Right now they don't have it. More Roads was almost on the verge of trying to bring that in. Now it could be a change to the smaller displacement engine that they were going to produce uh, in uh, India and China and the Far East, uh, but there's nothing there yet as now. So this is an interesting direction here for Harley Davidson, the rewire. They've certainly understood that there's been a problem at the top. They know there's been a problem with the direction of the company and also the way they've been trying to achieve it. They know that there is some kind of disconnect between themselves as a company, as a brand, and either current, past, current, and potentially future customers as well. So there are problems. It's not a total disaster. It's not a total fiasco, but there have been a few issues. They've they've sought to address this, but just like in Harley Davidson fashion right now, we don't have a lot of uh, good information which we can uh, chew the fat off really. So there's going to be a lot of supposition. We're going to have to wait until the uh, you know, second quarter uh, results to you know, come out to have a much more of a fuller idea of what all this means. Uh, but the, this can be a good thing for Harley Davidson and it can be um, a way for them to just get back to bases, as it were, get back to what works for them, maybe trim the products uh, down a little bit, maybe trim the models down a little bit, maybe actually invest a little bit more in those markets or those models where they're doing really well. Let's say, for example, the Sportster. Uh, many had feared that Sportster might be on the chopping block. Maybe they're going to have some reinvestment redesign of that platform, uh, and maybe that's when they'll see as uh, taking the company forward, along with the Taurus as well. Who knows? All speculation, of course. I Personally, I'm actually quite excited by this. I actually think this is a good thing for Harley Davidson. Um, and I think it's, it's almost that there is a clear vision now of what they want to do. Or I should say there's a clear vision of what they don't want to do. And that, for many people, would be music to their ears. And other people might be scratching their heads wondering what's going on. Only time went out. But anyway, this is the rewire from Harley Davidson. It's a readdressing, it's a revision of what's been going on for the last five years, this More Roads program. They're still going to keep some elements of it. They're still going to go ahead in certain models, but they're going to chop a lot of things uh, that uh, that wasn't working for them anyway. So that's it. That's the rewire. Uh, I hope you found that useful at least. And uh, But if you want to find out a little bit more about the Q1 results, uh, also about the rewire, just go to the uh, Harley Davidson website, the news, go to the financial section right at the bottom and you can read it all as well. But 
Catch you on the next video whenever that is. Uh, please subscribe, hit that bell, like and share, leave those comments. Let us know what you think of this rewire, of this video, uh, the good, the bad, the ugly, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, check out the website, revelatoralf.com. And I will catch you again very soon. Bye now. Revelator Al.